high school football. The state 4A championship game between Garner and Charlotte Harding was played Friday night. We've made special arrangements to bring that game to you right now on videotape. We followed Garner all season, and we're pleased to present this very special event. HCTV Sports presents High School Football, the game of the week, the state 4A championship, Garner versus Harding. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Charlotte's Memorial Stadium for tonight's HCTV High School Game of the Week. This is Jeff Harlow along with Randy Lee, and tonight we bring you the 1987 North Carolina 4A State Championship game between the undefeated Harding Rams and the also undefeated Garner Trojans. Randy, it looks to be an exciting matchup between two teams very similar in that they are Two of the smaller 4A schools in the state, both having excellent seasons and making it to the championship game. They're also slimmer in the fact that they have outstanding running backs. Jonathan, Jonathan Byers for Harding, one of the better backs in the league. Well, you have Barber for Garner, who probably is the best back in the league. You also got two good quarterbacks tonight. So uh, offensively, the matchups are there, and it's going to be interesting. We talk about the two teams, uh, people in this area, know about uh, Jonathan Byers, a thousand yard rusher for the Harding Rams, one of many components that they have on their offense, but also on the other side of the field on Garner, the running back Anthony Barber, number 43, is a man you'll see a lot of tonight. On the season has rushed for 2,860 yards and has scored 43 touchdowns, a, a unreal yeah. figure to have amassed in 14 games. He needs two touchdowns to break the all-time high school record. He needs 140 yards rushing tonight to reach 3,000. If he accomplishes that, he will be one of only 10 to ever have done it. And he ranks up there, and in fact, has surpassed some notable names such as Billy Sims, Earl Campbell, and even Herschel Walker. So this is a running back that has been very exciting, and he's gonna provide a lot of excitement tonight for the Garner Trojans. We'd like to welcome our viewers tonight that are joining us from up around Raleigh Way, WRAL in Raleigh broadcasting the game, and also Alert Cable in Apex and in Garner. We'd like to welcome all the viewers from up there. It looks to be an exciting game. Also have a big crowd on hand, so as, you, as we look out there, the place is uh, very, very full. That also adds some excitement with all the crowd here, and uh, it's going to be an interesting night. I believe there's going to be a lot of offense here. you got two great backs. you got uh, Ed Lawring, a very underrated quarterback for Harding. Stacy Betts, quarterback for Garner. He's run for 17 touchdown passes in his own right. I haven't heard a lot about him. You look at his stats, they're very good. So um, offensively, the numbers are there. Captain Hill and Captain Dykes. Captain Hill and Captain Dykes, if you will, shake hands with Captain Wilson, Captain Byers. Fellas, we have alternate captains on the hash mark for Harding. My fellow officials, I won't introduce them by name, but we're here during the course of the game. Feel free to come forward, ask any question during a penalty or whatever. We're going to depend on you fellas. Y'all are the captains. Take control of your team. Play hard. Play clean. We'll have a good game. Captain, you're the visitor. I'm going to let you call that. It's a half, a head or tail. Call it in the air. If I drop it, I'll toss it again. You call it loud. Heads, you call it. It's a tail. You see that? It's a tail. We want the ball. You want the ball. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, wait a minute. You only get one choice now. Okay, okay. We want the ball. You want the ball. You get your choice of goals. You're going to be kicking. Kick that way. You want to kick it toward the clock. Okay, if you will, fellas, put your backs to the goals you'll be defending. Okay. Red. Go receive here. Fellas, shake hands. Have a good ball game. And there we had the coin toss open the game. As you saw, the Harding Rams have won the coin toss, and they will receive the football first. We talk about these two teams. For Garner, this is a first trip to the state championship game. They've never been here before, so a lot of excitement for that school. For the Harding Rams, a team that has been the dominant team, the Tri-County 4A, since the creation of that league a few years back. They have been in the championship before, though. Back in 1952 and 1953, the Harding Rams went undefeated for two seasons. 
and he won the championship in 1953 over Hamlet by a 20 to nothing count. So it's been a long time for the Rams. They're back and uh, a lot of excitement uh, at Harding. Garner has never been to the championship game, but their head coach, Hal Stewart, back in 1978, was coaching at Richmond County. They won the state title over West Charlotte. So uh, this is nothing new for Mr. Stewart. There you see a shot of the crowd on hand, a big crowd. Looks like somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 to 18,000 already. And they expect a crowd of over 20,000 for the game. We talk about how these two teams got here in the playoffs. The Harding Rams were at home their first two games. They defeated Independence in a thrilling game, 34 to 32, and Ashbrook, 18 to 13. And then it was on to the road. They traveled up to Morganton, where they beat Freedom High, 14 to seven, and then to Greensboro to play the Grimsley Whirlies, winning that game, 16 to seven. And last week, they had a tough challenge with Grimsley, another great running back by the name of Sean Brown up there, and they did a good job with him. Talk about Garner in the playoffs. They opened against Roxboro Person, winning it 48 to 13. Then they were at home against Pinecrest, winning 28 to 8, and then on the road for them. Going to Richmond County, the former, the former hole for Hal Stewart, 28 to 24 was the outcome in that game. Garner a winner. And then last week they traveled to North Durham, winning a close one, 20 to 17. So both teams, 14 and 0 coming in. Both teams have performed well in the playoffs. When you talk about what the Harding Rams need to do going into this game, they're coming out on the field now. I think one of the key things is they've got to play four quarters of tough football. It seems that during the course of the playoffs, they've had some trouble with that. They'll play a couple of quarters extremely tough, but then they kind of lose a uh, little bit of the tempo and not quite as aggressive the rest of the way. They're going to have to be solid tonight against this Garner team. This Garner team can score points in bunches, so... Harding's defense is really up for a tough task. Garner last week beat Northern Durham 20 to 17. A lot of teams will be happy scoring 20 points a game. Not Garner, that's the first time this season that he scored less than four touchdowns in one game. So Anthony Barber is just a sensational running back and uh, they've really, he's really carried the team on his shoulders. His stats are just unbelievable. And to stop this Garner attack, you gotta stop Barber. No one has been able to stop Barber this year. He's rushed for over 100 yards in each game. The worst game he had this year was 140 yards rushing. In fact, the average yardage for him in the game is 204 yards per game. Outstanding. In fact, one game this season, as you can see, the Garner Trojans coming out onto the field now. One game this season, Barber was hit about waist high. A solid hit put on by a tackler. He spun 360 degrees in the air, landed on his feet, and picked up 15 more yards. So if there's a question about his durability, I think that would answer it. A lot of people are looking at Mr. Barber. Some of the schools, of course, all the ACC schools have expressed interest. Also. Uh, Notre Dame and Oklahoma. So a lot of big name schools are talking about Anthony Barber. They are two good backs in tonight's game. Barber, of course, for Garner, Byers for Harding, two very different backs. Jonathan Byers, all his yards usually come between the tackles. He's a powerful runner who tends to get better as the game goes on. Witnessed by the fact that in the last three games in the playoffs, he's gained over 100 yards in the second half of those three ball games. You have Barber, outstanding speed. I've never seen him play in person. Just watching the highlights on the television, he's got outstanding speed, and he tends to gain a lot of ground around the tackle. So uh, two great backs, but they gain yards in different type of manners. And of course, we'd also like to thank my brother Walter Harlow, who joined us tonight. He'll be keeping us updated on the stats as we go along. And the entire crew of Cablevision of Charlotte and HCTV that has been outstanding all season long. We're about ready for the opening kickoff now. And number nine is set to kick it away for the Garner Trojans. That is Kelly Hill. It's a low kick, fielded at the 15, the 20, the 25. Byers on the return. It's out across the 35 to about the 38-yard line. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Harding Rams at that point. Here's a Harding offensive backfield. Very underrated quarterback in Ed Lawring. The running backs are Jonathan Byers, 
Joey Hustetler, usually a tight end at wing back. He's followed by a bad knee. Anthony Rice, a tight end. Darren Hart, a wide receiver. Chris Ryan, the other wide out. So right now, they're going with a one back backfield tonight. Now, they have other good running backs, and we see a penalty being marched off against Garner, I believe. Let's see. They're going to kick it over again. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. I'm a little surprised that Harding took this penalty. It's offsides on Garner. Harding had the ball at the 38-yard line, first down and 10 from there. They're going to gamble that they can get better field position. I think I'd have been happy with that. Well, certainly 38. 38-yard line is, is definitely not bad territory to start off. I don't think you can really complain about it, but they want every opportunity. They believe they have a lot of speed on their kick return team, and they want every opportunity to try to get the most out of them. So let's see what they can do. Gardner now kicking from their own 35. David Petty is the man that has trouble getting the football. And Petty ending up on the ground. His knee went down as he tried to get control of the ball, so that automatically was a down. And they're going to mark it at about the 23, maybe 24-yard line. Here's the Rams offensive line. Mark Lattimore, outstanding. Center of the guards are Jeff Bright and Anthony Ellison. The tackle, Sam Presley and Shaft Hunter. Presley, an outstanding offensive tackle. First down and 10, the Harding Rams. Receiver split wide to both sides. Byers in the backfield gets the ball first and nowhere to go. The right side of the Gardner defensive line surged brilliantly on the first play, wrapping up Byers. Rodney Gordon, number 73, led the way. Here's the Gardner defensive line. No one on this defense weighs more than 190 pounds. The tackles, Bill Sparkman and Chris Thompson. The ends are Keith Evans and Rodney Gordon. A very, very quick defense. They're not big, but they're quick. Second down. They'll need about 11. They lost about a yard on that first play. And again, Jonathan Byers. He tries to go the other way. Broke a couple of tackles. Finally, he's brought down by number 32 that came up to make the play. That's John Leach, the sophomore linebacker. Here's your Garner defensive backfield. And also the linebackers, the backers are Kelly Hill, Pete Smith, and Chris Dorman. Cornerback, Steve Smith, James Green, safety, Levi Beckwith. The other linebacker are left out, John Leach. And so the Harding Rams, third down and eight. They have three receivers in the game now, two to the far side, one to the near side, walling us back to pass. And he had some trouble and tried to run it forward, and it's brought down 73. Rodney Gordon was the man there first. And Rodney, Rodney Gordon is the one exception to what we talked about a moment ago when we said that they had nobody over 190 pounds. Gordon is at 240. He's starting tonight in place of Rich, who normally would start. And a good defensive showing on the first series by the Garner Trojans. Darren Hart to punt it away for the Rams. And it's going to take a Harding roll. And number 82, Jeff Wilson, downs it at about the 40-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for the Garner Trojans at that point. Here's your Garner offensive backfield. Stacy Betts, he's thrown for 17 touchdowns this year. He's a quarterback. Anthony Barber has rushed for over 2,800 yards and scored 43 touchdowns. He's a tailback. Chris Dorman, the fullback. The tight end, Jackie Sortini. Split end, Robert Hitton. Flanker, Pete Smith. On first down, backs in the I formation. Receivers split wide to both sides. To give, no surprise, number 42. Barber is gone. Off to the races on a first play from scrimmage. Anthony Barber, a 60-yard touchdown run. Make that 61 yards. And he just burst right up the middle. They got a hole open for him, and he gave us the demonstration of his speed as he got through. Nothing fancy, just all speed and left everybody behind. And Jeff, that's his 44th touchdown this season. He's now tied at all-time record in high school. One more touchdown makes him the all-time leader for touchdowns in one season. That's right. Now the extra point attempt by number 53. It is up, and it is good. And so 
14 G. Rich adds the point after, and with nine minutes, 15 seconds to play in the first quarter, Garner strikes quickly out in front, seven to nothing. You see the replay here, he's got outstanding speed, he gains a lot of ground outside the tackles. This time he gets a great block from his fullback, and with Barber's speed, he's off to the race. A super block by number 22, Chris Dolman, the fullback, led him up the middle, and after that it was all she wrote, because if you're behind Barber, you're not gonna gain any ground, he's just too fast. And so the Trojans show quickly what they're capable of on offense. And Garner gets the attention of everybody here at Memorial Stadium. And they'll now kick it back to the Rams. Rams will go on offense for the second time. They didn't do very much the first time. Yeah, that's they'll Garner's see. first play ever in a state championship game, and it's a 61-yard yeah. touchdown run. Well, you know, you talk about players. Well, he slipped and fell on that play, so number 21 is down. So that's going to start Harding out in deep field position. That's Ray Durham, number 21. And that's going to mark the ball at about the six-yard line. So deep in their own, in a hole to start out with is going to make things tough for the Harding Rams. Garner performed very well on their first series defensively. They'll try to do so one more time. Harding's had a tendency this year of starting out early. They've scored over 90 points in the first quarter this year, so it's unusual when he find himself behind in the first quarter. Well, they're gonna run it with Byers again. He tries to come to the left side, and he gets it out to about the nine yard line, it looks like. Tackle made by 70, Keith Evans. Number 70, Keith Evans was up on the tackle for Gardner. Pick up about three. Well, Byers has carried the ball three times now for minus one, two, and then one yard. So Garner, so far, the small defensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage. A lot of times in high school football, size is not the important thing, but rather speed. And I think Garner is demonstrating that so far. Back to pass. They have pressure on the quarterback. It's caught by Hart. And Hart trying to break tackles, but can't get away from number 73, Gordon. The hardest down at the 18, but he had enough for the first down. Number 23, Steve Smith, is a corner over there. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage on Darren Hart, gave him a big cushion, and when Hart catches the ball, he's a threat to go the distance on every opportunity. Here he is, he's one-on-one -on -one with number 23, had a good play there by Steve Smith, allowed him to make the catch, but stayed right there with him and didn't allow Hart to break down the sideline for a big game. That's just good defensive coverage. Well, they get the first down out of it, so first and 10, Harding. Back to pass is long on first down. Pressure comes, he has to run it. Breaks one tackle, and then it's brought down at the 24. And I believe number 23 was the man there again. So Steve Smith in on two big plays very quickly. We don't see, we haven't seen Ed Lawring run a lot this year, but he is rather mobile. In this offense, he doesn't run the option that, uh, that much, and usually his offensive line gives him time enough where he doesn't have to scramble, so we haven't seen him uh, run a lot this year. Well, when you talk about the Harding offensive line, they have a weight advantage on every position just about. But right now, the Garner defense has put a lot of pressure in. They're gonna, the little swing pass out to Sean Moore, number 10, he broke a tackle, and he's got a lot of speed. He's finally brought down at the 43. This time, number 33 makes the play, James Green, a 5'10", 170-pound senior for Gardner, makes the play, but not before Sean Moore, after some fine running after the catch, gets another Harding first down. 19 yards in the play, they threw a quick out to Hart, then they threw a quick out to Moore, so they haven't gone downfield yet. Well, you know, they have to do the types of things they're doing right now to spread the Garner defense out and keep them from coming with everybody to stop the run. Misdirection to Joey Huffstetler does not work. Number 22 is in quickly. The linebacker, Chris Dorman, got early penetration and was able to get in and stop the play really before it could get going. The guy who just made the tackle, Dorman, was uh, the fullback who blocked for Barb on that long touchdown run. One of several players that play both ways for the Trojans. So the second down and 10 now. Two receivers lined up to the far side. Byers by himself in the backfield, going back to pass. And he's in trouble. Sack back at the 30-yard line. Number nine was the first man there, Kelly Hill. And I'll tell you what, Kelly Hill came through. Jonathan Byers was there to try to block him. But Kelly Hill got right by him, 
and got to the quarterback. We'll see it here. It's a design rollout. And you see Hill, and you also see Chris Thompson there, and Laubring didn't have a chance. Garner's had an outstanding pass rush so far. The only two times he didn't pressure Laubring is when he had that quick three-step three, uh, drop back and threw a little uh, out to his wide receivers. And so now the Rams face with third down and 29. Number 20 goes in motion. Blowing back to pass, has time, throws, and it's incomplete. Right there was a hook and lateral. Hope we get to see that again. They were going to have the hook and lateral. Now oh, they call it they a call fumble. A fumble. They're going to say that Darren Hart caught the football. And then probably, as you said, was looking to pitch it out to Sean Moore. He got hit and the ball came loose. We'll see it here. Watch as soon as Hart catches the ball. Looks like he wants the pitch to Moore. Number 10 coming into your screen. He's getting ready to pitch it there. Yeah. And he dropped it. That's that hook and lateral. And they had it covered, too. They had uh, number five was out there. Levi Beckwith, and if they would have pitched it to him, I don't think Moore would have had much more room. And so a turnover early in the football game, and they give it to number 43, who runs up the middle. And Barber with a short gain as he gets it inside the 40 to about the 38. And the Harding Rams make a turnover. That's something that Coach Tom Notch was concerned about coming into tonight's game. They've had a little problem with that but not on the hook and lateral play. That's been the bread and butter play for them that has really hurt people all year. This time, they give to the fullback, number 22, and he has stopped at the line, maybe a short game. Good defensive coverage. Chris Dorman was the ball carrier. It. Here's your Garner offensive line. Center Shane Hooper, guards John Dykes, Lance Bradley tackles Mark Brown and James Woolard. And it's third down. They need about seven yards for the first. Back to pass, handoff. And a good defensive play by number 42 and number 66. The men in on the play were the linebackers, Michael Barber and Vernon Hunter. We said this could be a matchup tonight of Barber versus Barber. Well, we see it on this play. See, Anthony runs into Michael. Michael's one of the better linebackers in this area. And Vernon Hunter, number 66, was there also to help out. And so it'll be fourth down. And the Trojans will have to punt away. So they get the ball on a turnover, but the Rams come up with a good defensive effort. And now we'll get the ball back. Wilson came in to put pressure. They couldn't quite get there. It's going to take a Harding bounce. And they'll down it at about the 13. When you take the uh, when you win the coin toss and take the kickoff, you tend to feel you're going to have the better field position in the first quarter. What well, hasn't happened that way for Harding tonight? Remember they were starting at their own 38, gambled on the offside penalty, figured they could gain a little bit more ground. They did, and they started their own 24. After the touchdown, they started at their own six. Now they're operating at their own 14. First down and 10, the Harding Rams from their own 14. Three receivers in the ball game, two to the wide side, one to the near side, fake handoff, throwing over the middle. Tight end Anthony Rice has it. He could be gone, he's a fast one. And Anthony Rice being chased but not caught. All the way for the touchdown, a 76 yard catch and run. But a flag is down in the backfield, so let's wait just a minute. We might have celebrating a little bit too soon because the yellow marker is back with the official at the 14 and Ed Lawing, the quarterback, is over to talk with him. Well, it is against Garner. It's declined and a touchdown stands with 3.07 to play. Here you see it. It's a streak right down the middle. Rice has got good speed. He's 6'4", got the long legs, and there's no catching him there. Extra points going to tie this thing up. That was a good effort by Levi Beckwith trying to catch him from behind, but Rice shows his speed. And now Bill Baker, number 73, will attempt the point after. So we've seen a first quarter. Two big plays have provided the scoring so far. Kick is up, and it is good. And with 3.07 to play in the first quarter, we're all tied up at seven apiece. 
There's a shot of the crowd and a big crowd on hand we talked about as we got started. Harden and Garner knotted up at seven all. So Lauren certainly started well tonight. Four for four, 86 yards, make that 126 yards. And one touchdown. They have a lot of weapons, though. He can throw to a lot of people. That's something that a lot of people really don't notice when they talk about Harden because they have Jonathan Byers. Everybody thinks about him. But they have some excellent receivers. Anthony Rice is one tight end. The wingback, Joey Hustetler, is another wide receiver. Darren Hart is a third great receiver. And the running back, number 10, Sean Moore, can come out and catch just an abundance of receivers to throw the ball to. And even a man we didn't mention, number 89, Jermaine Covington, who is an underclassman, but expected to be a starting tight end next year, he can come in and contribute. So they have got a lot of weapons. It's awfully hard on the defense when you have that much talent for the receiving game. Harding's now going to kick off from the 30 or from the 45-yard uh, line of Garner. The penalty on that touchdown play was against Garner, so that they have marked it off a 15-yard personal foul penalty against Garner. That's why Hart's towing it up from the 45. And a kick returner all the way back in the end zone. It's a short kick. They'll come out, field it at the 10, the 20, the 25, and he'll be stopped at that point. They pick him up and drop him. That's Jeff Wilson. He's an outstanding defensive end, but he's also very tough on the special teams, number 82. I think number 32, John Leach, was the man to return that. One correction. I gave you some uh, incorrect information on a touchdown pass. It was 86 yards, not 76 yards. So 86-yard touchdown pass to Rice. Barber had a 61-yard touchdown run. Two carries since then hasn't gained anything. But showing on that one touchdown that all he needs is a little bit of room and he can be gone. First down and 10 for the Trojans. Hand off up the middle. Barber gets the call. Not much room to run it. Good defensive effort by number 59. You see him in there. Here's the Harding linebackers and defensive backs. Michael Barber, outstanding backer. Vernon Hunter, the other. Strong safety, Roderick Cole. Quarterbacks, Damon Bullock and Dwayne Hill. Free safety, Terrace Jones. Harding loves to play that eight-man front and dares the other teams to pass. Second down now for the Trojans. Back to pass and throwing downfield. Number three had his man beat, but the ball was way out in front. Betts was looking for Robert Hinton. The senior, but the pass was just too far out in front, and he couldn't catch up with it. He had Damon Bullock beaten. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Hinton just blew by him. And the pass was there. He would have caught it and possibly scored a touchdown on it. These, these two teams just have so much potential for the big play. You just never know what's going to happen. So much pressure on the defense to know that the other team can score on any play. And so now the Trojans face with a third down and nine. Bets the quarterback, receiver on the near side. He wants to throw, pressure coming, and he gets sacked. And number 40 got in. On the play, I believe that's Sean Springs. And an excellent play by the sophomore. See it here. I don't know if anyone touched him or not. And right up the middle. He's a linebacker, so he blitzed up the middle that time. Harding loves the blitz, and that time Garner didn't pick it up. It didn't look like they saw him. He's a reserve linebacker, so not one of the players they've watched a lot on film. Now he's lined up right on the line. Fourth down, Garner to punt. It's a high punt, but not a long punt. They signal for the fair catch, and it's fielded by Darren Hart just about midfield. Harding will have it in their own territory, but just slightly. So the Ram defense comes up with another solid effort. They'll get the ball back. One minute, 22 seconds to play in the first quarter. And Randy, as we look at the first quarter, it started out very early with the momentum in favor of the Trojans. They came out, stopped Harding on the initial series with the football. Then they got the big touchdown run. But since that time, Harding has started to take control of the momentum. And now they'll try to continue that. Boying the pass on first down, going deep. And nobody to throw it to a flag is down. And a wide receiver on the play, Darren Hart, was tangled up with Steve Smith, number 23. And very likely will have a pass interference call. The pass was overthrown for Blowing. I don't believe Hart would have been able to catch up with it, but there was enough contact there. He did knock him down, so 
the flag was thrown on the play, but it was thrown so far downfield, I don't think Hart would have had a chance to catch that pass, but of course where Smith's at, there's no way he could have, you know, had any idea that was going to happen. 15 yards and first down. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty in the first down, so that's three penalties for 35 yards against Gardner here in the first quarter. Defensive pass interference, automatic first down. There you hear the indication by Jim Render, one of the officials. The umpire tonight, Bob Beyer. Head of the linesman is Clint Abernathy. Field judge, Mike Cook. And a Harding Rams first down and 10. Hand off to Byers. Inside, good run this time. Inside to the 35. And it was number five that stopped him, Levi Beckwith. And it's a good up front blocking by the Harding offensive line. Gave Byers a room he needed. Byers is such a tough runner. He's so difficult to bring down one-on-one, -on -one, but he's also getting some blocking there. No one touched him until he got into the secondary, and it's going to be mighty tough to stop Harding if Byers isn't stopped or even hit close to the line of scrimmage. Well, Sam Presley, number 65 for the Rams, made an excellent block on that play to help open that hole. First down and 10. Man was in motion early. David Petty on the misdirection run, and he is brought down at the, ninth, at the 21. By number 23, the man we talked a lot about, Steve Smith, had been in on almost every play. But I believe that flag may be against the Rams for a legal procedure. The running back who just carried the ball, Petty, doesn't get a lot of ink, but he's an outstanding running back. He just doesn't get the opportunity to play because Jonathan Byers is the main man this year for the Harding Rams. But Petty will be back next year. He's a junior. Illegal motion on the offense. Still first down. All right, so illegal motion to call against the Harding offense. And that'll back it up five yards. But will remain a first down. The Rams with two receivers to the near side, two backs behind the quarterback. Line back to pass, throwing, and overthrew his intended receiver, Darren Hart, on the play. And that will bring up a second down and 15. The thing you have to watch for the Harding offense is when they line up with Sean Moore and Darren Hart on the same side. We saw that earlier when they tried the hook and lateral. Right. Sean Moore will come trailing Darren Hart. Hart usually makes the medium range catch and then pitches it out. That's a play that has really hurt a lot of people. This time receivers wide to both sides. The misdirection run by Byers, a big hole, and Byers is all the way down to the 16-yard line. Some solid running by Jonathan Byers right now. Let's watch it again. He's doing a lot of damage on the left side of that uh, offensive line, the right side of the defensive line for Garner. Another good block by Presley. You saw him laying down there on the ground. And that's the last play of the first quarter. Levi Beckwith made the tackle that saved the touchdown. And the first quarter has come to an end here at Memorial Stadium with the Garner Trojans and the Harding Rams all tied up at seven apiece. And we'll be back with second quarter action right after this. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium. This is Jeff Harlow along with Randy Lee here on HCTV's Game of the Week. The state championship game, Harding Rams and the Garner Trojans, 7-7 seven, seven tie with the Rams in scoring position. Handoff goes to the workhorse, Jonathan Byers, who carries it from the 16-yard line inside to about the 13-yard line, enough for the first down, so first down and 10 now for the Harding Rams. And Randy, we saw in the first quarter, really, two different types of football. It started out very early with Garner controlling things, their defense shutting down Harding on the first series, then the big run by Barber for the touchdown, but after that, things started to change and the Rams started to gain control. Pitch out on first down to David Petty, trying to get around the corner, still on his feet, and finally taken down inside the 10 at about the nine, and it was number 32 that finally put the wraps on him. A lot of people had shots, but John Leach got him down. A flag went down, possible face mask. No, I didn't see that one. And so the penalty is against Harding. That was the 19th offensive play for Harding so far in the first half. They've, they've doubled Garner's 
plays. Garner's only had been, been able to run nine plays so far in the first quarter. 84. 84. Number 84. 84 pushed him from behind. All right, the, the penalty indicated against Chris Ryan, the wide receiver for the Hardy Rams. Watch the play again. They just run to the outside. And yep, there's a the push. Yeah, you see the push by number 33, who's trying to line up for the tackle. This is a good call. First down and 10. Going back to pass. As time flowing over the middle, Darren Hart is there, but could not hold on. Uh, number three, bumping up there by number 23. The ball was a little bit high. Hart got a hand on it, but couldn't bring it in. And though you know, you talked, Randy, about the yardage situation and Harding having piled up more yardage uh, and more plays with the ball. But when you have the explosive running of Anthony Barber, that's all it takes to even things out. We have that exactly right. on the scoreboard at 7 all. Yeah, you look at the number of plays, Harding's dominated. First down, 7-1. Scoreboard, though, it's 7-7. Seven seven. All right, this is a situation to watch. They have Darren Hart and Sean Moore lined up at the bottom of your screen on the near side. Going back to pass, throwing, wanted to hit hard, but threw it behind him. Many times from that formation, the Rams will try the hook and lateral plays. So you have to keep an eye out for them. You can bet the Garner defense has been watching a lot of film on that during the week, as the Rams have been watching a lot of film of Anthony Barber. Third down coming up for the Rams with a ball marked at the 21. They're going to need about 20 yards for the first down. Going back to pass. Pressure coming from the far side, and Loy has no way to go. Good pressure by number 40, number 50, and number 22. Chris Thompson, number 40, was the man that got him, but pressure came from the other side by Chris Dorman, and also number 50, who is in on the play. So an excellent job by the Garner defense that time. Loing tried to roll out in 40. Chris Thompson was there to take away his escape avenue. And that sack takes Harding out of field goal position. So right now they're going to go for it. They need to get down to the two for a first down. So it's fourth and 29. Back to pass. Pressure is coming. They're going to set up the screen to Byers. Byers to the about. outside and he's out of he's bounds out of at the 11. So it will be. All for not a line. good effort by the Rams, but it will not be enough for the first down, so they will turn the ball over to Garner on downs. But the Trojans will have the ball at that point. So mark it about the 11. You see it here. He got some good blocks out in front of him. 65, boy, Presley, another good block. He's had a good first quarter in terms of blocking. And so when you're in that position, they, they really didn't know if they could get a punt to go where they wanted it, so they try a play like that. Works out pretty well, puts Garner deep in their own territory so if you don't score at least you back them up first down and 10 the trojans handoff number 43 broke the tackle puts a good spin move on and got around number 31 on the number 33 dwayne hill rather and almost broke that one that was that for running he that hit a 360. That's right. That's something he does very well, they say. See how many yards he gets after the initial contact. He might have been to line of scrimmage, maybe one yard downfield. Picks up 17 yards in a place, so 16 yards gained after the initial contact. That's a sign of good back. How many yards can he get after he's hit for the first time? And the man that he shook off on that first play was Vernon Hunter, who's no easy man to get away from. Now he's going to be lined up on the outside. Quarterback wants to pass. Pressure coming, a loose one tackle, but then he is stopped. Michael Barber was there, as was Roderick Cole, and the flag is down. He threw something into the pileup. I think he just wanted to mark this spot. I don't believe yeah. it was a penalty flag. There they pick it up. It yeah, was yellow, just though, just like a penalty flag. They faked it to the fullback there. It looked to me like they wanted to throw it to Barber, cutting across the middle, but he wasn't open. And it looked like he only had one receiver they were looking for in that type of situation. He was covered, so uh, they had no other options. So second down now. Handoff in the backfield. The defense is all over it. Barber looking for room. That time didn't have any. Vernon Hunter, number 66, was in there quickly, but he had a lot of help. Michael Barber, number 42, also in there on defense. 
And here's a situation the Harding coach, Tom Knotts, wanted Garner to be in. Third down and long. His game plan was to make Stacy Betts throw more than he wanted to. And it's a third down and 12 here. And Harding throughout the football season was a, a very tough team to throw against. All right, the Garner Trojans have two receivers lined up at the bottom of your screen. Down number 10 will go in motion. That's the flanker, P. Smith. Pitch out to Barber. Barber got through the hole, broke the tackle, but finally taken down at the 43 by number 62. I caught up with him. What an excellent run. And that'll be enough for the first down. How about that? You got a third down and 12 play. You just pitch it back to your bread and butter man, Barber. He's going to pick you up 16. Watch, he broke the tackle by Terrence Jones there. 62, Jeff Bright came up and hit him from behind. If he hadn't got there, he might have been gone. And really, that's the only way they've stopped him so far. They've been able to get him from behind. Hand off, broken tackle by number 32, but then he is stopped after a gain of about four. Sam Nash is in there to apply the initial contact. He didn't wrap up, and Norman just bounced off of him and picked up some good yardage. Well, I believe that was number 32 on that play, John Leach, that carried the ball. That's his first carry in the ball game. And it'll be second down and about seven for the Trojans. Barber, six, make that uh, 96 yards now already. Pitch out to Barber. He wants to throw the football. He's looking deep downfield. Terrence Jones is ready. that the Harding Rams are so good at, and that's why they like people to throw. They have probably the best secondary in the state. Terrace Jones, one of the players, he's a senior. Now watch it, they hand it off to Barber. And he throws in a double coverage. There's two Rams and one Trojan there. Rams win the battle. All right, Dwayne Hill is 33. He covered the receiver, Hinton. And then, of course, number eight, Terrace Jones playing center fielder. He just went after the ball. First and ten, the Rams. They give it to Byers, who comes to the near side. Broke one tackle, now carries him. And carries the man out of bounds at about the 37. The man that was trying to bring him down was number 10. That's Pete Smith. And Byers just used his, his strength and carry Smith with him. And once again, they're going off the left side, following number 65, Sam Presley. Good block by uh, Darren Hart is put in. First down and 10 now for the Rams. Ball mark at the 38. And off, Byers, a big hole. And Byers across midfield. And to about the 46-yard line, the hit applied by Levi Beckwith at about midfield, but even after the hit by Beckwith, Byers goes forward picking up about three more yards. And off the left side once again, Jeff. Picks up 13 yards and 17 yards on this carry. So two carries, both off the left side of his drive for a total of 30 yards. And that time, a good defensive play. You saw on the initial play, a lot of pressure put on the quarterback long that time, but had enough time to hand it off. Wants the pass on first down. Complete to Sean Moore. And Moore has it down inside the 40 to about the 35, maybe the 34. Let's see where they mark it. Mark it at the 35. That's very close to another first down. Looks like they'll be just shy of it. They might have to bring the chains out on this. Hope we can see the block here by number 65, Presley. Let's see more catch it. Let's see if we can see 65 out there in front of him. Look at the block there. Good block by Presley. Of course, Presley ended up on the ground but was able to hold up the defender and let Moore pick up the yardage he needed to get the first down. Lying the pass again. This time it's deflected. And the quarterback went up for it, tried to catch his own reception, but couldn't do it. I believe number 10, Pete Smith, was the Trojan, batted the ball up in the air. Well, And Lauren just played defensive back after the ball was batted up in the air. He's 5'9". He's got to chip up there against a big defensive end and fight for that football. And that's a wrap against small quarterbacks. Have to throw over those big defensive linemen once in a while. All right, the Harney Rams receivers wide to both sides. Handoff. 
to the near side. Byers with room inside the 30 and gets down to about the 26 before he stopped. Number 33, James Green, came up. Garner's going to have to make a change on their right side of the defensive line, either in personnel or do something different because right now, Byers and Harding are just eating that side of the defensive line alive right now. Well, Sam Presley and Jeff Bright did an excellent job of blocking to open the hole for Byers. Third down, they need about a yard. Byers caught in the backfield and stopped. Tell you what, that was a super play by John Dykes. He's a defensive lineman now. He came from the left side. He was a left defensive tackle on that play. He had to cut across the middle, make the tackle, and he dropped Byers behind the line of scrimmage. So it's going to bring up a fourth down and two. And, and you know the Rams will be going for it at uh, the line of scrimmage at the 27. Their field goal kicker not that strong. They have two receivers lined up wide, two backs behind the quarterback. And they give it to Byers again, and he does not get the first down. Good defensive effort. Sean Springs was in there to block, but the hole was plugged, and Byers caught in the backfield, so they'll turn the football over. There's a shot of the crowd here, as we said, in a neighborhood of 20,000 here at Memorial Stadium, maybe better than that. It's a good job by Garner. Third down and one, you figure Hardy can pick it up. But uh, they went off that left side two times in a row. Garner must have done something a little bit different because uh, both times they stopped Byers. One for a negative one-yard gain. Second carry needed two yards, only picked up one. And so the Trojan defense comes up with a big defensive stand. They get the ball back for Anthony Barber, and he's got it on first down. A gain out to the 35, and he picks up almost the first down on that carry. What an exciting running back. Anthony Barber has been so far in the football game. The kind of back that on every play he gets the football, you've got to be concerned that he might break the big one. Second down for Gardner. They need about a yard for the first. Inside handoff for a short game. And Barber, so far on the night, seven carries for 105 yards and has one touchdown, the one you saw. Play was the fullback, Gorman, number 22, that picks up the first down. And the ball's marked at about the 37 yard line. Be first and 10 for the Trojans at that point. And off to Barber. And this time they wrap him up. Roderick Cole, number 32, came up there. So Barber is, excuse me, Barber has now tied another national high school record. This is the 15th game of the season. He's gone for over 100 yards in all 15 games. So that ties a national record. Congratulations to just an unbelievable running back, Anthony Barber. And another man in on that hit was the other Barber, Michael Barber, for the Harding Ram defense. Second down, they need about nine. Anthony Barber, strong running. Up close to midfield. Appears to be enough for the first down. And that time it was just quick slashing ability of Barber. That gained the yards. The offensive line got him a hole, and he did the rest. It'll be close enough for a measurement. 3-11 left here in the second quarter. This football game's tied at seven. Both touchdowns and big plays, and Donner has the first down. Barber on a 61-yard run. Anthony Rice on an 86-yard touchdown pass from Ed Lawley. So first down and 10 now for the Garner Trojans. The ball at their own 47. That's the quarterback, two backs behind him. Pitch out to Barber near side. And it's tripped up by Vincent Guy. He goes down at about the 47 of Harding. And the momentum that he has demonstrated that time. Vincent Guy hit him back close to midfield. He falls forward, picks up about three more yards. It's amazing how many yards he gets on his own. I'm not saying Garner doesn't have good, uh, a good offensive line. That time, saw a Guy come up and make the tackle. And you saw the spinoff move again by Barber. That's what he used 
well against a lot of opponents, and he's done it tonight. A flag down the backfield, and Roderick Cole, number 32, was the man to get through initially and put the wraps on Anthony Barber. We do have a flag down in the Barber, in the Garner backfield. It's against Garner. I would think right Harding would want to decline this penalty. Backfield in motion. Yeah. There you saw the indication. Motion against Garner. Nice tackle by uh, Roderick Cole. Not very many people can bring down Barber one-on-one. -on -one. He lost two yards or a yard on the play, so he would rather have a third down and five situation, speaking of the Harden defense, they'd rather see a third and five for the second nine. Certainly. That way, Barb can only carry one time, not twice. That's right. Yeah. And he'll have two receivers line up to the near side. Backs are in the eye formation now. That's the quarterback for Garner. Back to pass. Now he hands off. A delay draw to Barber. Did not fool number 78 on the play. And that is big Daryl Gray, the 6'3", 285-pound singer. Garner's offensive line has really kept him quiet in the first half. He hasn't been on a lot of tackles, and he's a pretty good defensive tackle. So the center and the two guards on the Gardner offensive line are doing a, a rather good job against big number 78. Well, they give up a lot of weight to the Harding defensive line, but they've been able to make up for that by their quickness. So it brings up a fourth down now. They're taking a lot of time running this play in. And I think they're just going to take a penalty here, back it up five yards and give their kicker a little bit more room, possibly to go for a coffin corner. Okay, the punter is number seven, the quarterback, Stacy Betts. So there's always a threat for him to pass, but with the ball, their own 45, he's going to kick it away. It gets away a pretty good one. Angling to the far sideline, takes an excellent roll, and they'll down it at about the 10 yard line. And a great punt that time by Betts. And so, with the score 7 to 7, we'll be back with the final moments of the first half right after this. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium. 40 seconds, all the remains of the first half here in the 1987 4A State Championship. Hardening rounds. Joiner Trojans tied at 7 apiece. Harding first down to 10. Head off to Byers near side. Byers breaks tackles and is finally dragged out of bounds and brought to the ground after he was out of bounds. And the fans on, on the Harding side not very happy about that. He went out about the 40-yard line. Now watch the play again. That's been the most successful play so far in the playbook on the ground for Harding. A little delay handoff running off the left side. And once again, Byers picks up a lot of yardage, 17 yards on that carry. The man that brought him out was number 23, Steve Smith. We talked about him a lot tonight. He's been very instrumental for the Trojan defense. 24 seconds left in the first half. You might see that hook and lateral. All the receivers, or two of the three receivers, going to the top of the screen. Darren Hart is by himself at the bottom of the screen. One back behind the quarterback line. Fakes the handoff. Looks downfield for Hart. It's intercepted. Number 33. The fumble of the football. The Hart and Rams have the back. Number 33 was the center fielder on that play. The pass went right to him. He got the interception, started back with it, fumbled it, and number 57, Mark Latimer, the center, was able to recover it for Hardy. A crazy, crazy play. As you'll see the interception here. Lowering overshoots his receiver. Now let's see if anybody hit him or if he just lost the ball. I think he was pounded pretty good as he comes up field. He's carrying it like a loaf of bread and paid for it. He was hit from behind. I couldn't see who hit him, but it was enough to knock the ball loose. And Harding gets a big break that time. They had turned the ball over, but then the ensuing fumble gives it right back to them, and they get a first down out of it. Lawring didn't uh, read the coverage right that time. At the top of the screen, on the TV screen, top of the field, Harding had two wideouts. 
and Gordon only had one defensive back over there. The safety was about in the middle of the field, so there was a two-on-one on the other side. Walbring didn't look that way that time. Up in the press box, Harding has an offensive coordinator. We might have seen that, so we might see some type of play here. And uh, go maybe to the right side to see if Garner, once again, only has one defensive back with two wide receivers. I wouldn't think they would do it again, but uh, you never know. All right, number 10, Sean Moore, has just come into the game for the Harding offense. So let's see if he lines up on the same side. He does. Line up to the near side, Sean Moore and Darren Hart. They have the play set up for a possible hook and ladder. Let's see if they're going to try it. Going back to pass. Going downfield the other way to Rice. The tight end, the ball tipped away. Beautiful play by number 32 on the defense. John Leach, the linebacker, knocked the ball away at the last moment. And we have a Hardy man down. Super play. You'll see it coming up here. That pass is perfect. But look at Leach playing center field. Great play. And the receiver, Rice, the tight end down on the football field. With Eight seconds left to go here in the first half. He was hit after Leach tipped that pass away. And uh, their little shy of tight ends with Hustadler, who was a starting tight end at the beginning of the year. He has a knee problem. He's now been playing wing back. And if Rice goes down, the depth factor just isn't there for Harding. Looks like he's going to get up and possibly walk off the field. Uh, he took a pretty good lick after Leach knocked that ball away from him. Oh, he's off balance. He might knock the wind out of him when he hit the ground. He gets up a little tender, but appears to be okay as he comes off under his own power. It'll be a second down now. Eight seconds is all that shows on the clock, so the Rams will likely try to go deep once again. Receivers wide to both sides. Rolling under pressure and brought down, wiped out by number 10, Pete Smith, who came charging through, nobody even blocking. We talk about a blind side sack. Here it is. Lawring, fortunately for Harding, held onto the football. Of course, you can't advance the fumble. That would have been the last play of the first half, so it wouldn't matter. But, man, he got wiped out by Pete Smith, who's been on quite a few tackles. He's a 6'3", 190-pound defensive end. And so with that, the first half has come to a conclusion here at Memorial Stadium. The Harding Rams and the Garner Trojans all tied up at 7. We'll be back for halftime right after this. back to Memorial Stadium here at Charlotte, North Carolina. There you see a shot of the cityscape behind us here at Memorial Stadium with a crowd of about 20,000 on hand. We're at having state championship football between the Harding Rams and the Garner Trojans. This is Jeff Harlow along with Randy Lee. And at halftime, we've got a 7-7 football game. And it has been an outstanding one so far. A lot of offense for both teams, yet only two scores on the scoreboard thus far. The big story, as we talked about at halftime, for the Gardner team is, of course, the running of the outstanding back, number 43, Anthony Barber, who has scored one touchdown, giving him 44 on the year now. He has tied the all-time high school record. If he can get one in the second half, then he would become the person with the most touchdowns ever in high school history. So that's one thing to look for in the second half. He's had a lot of yardage in the first so half, about 119 choice, yards. Okay, y'all got to be kicking. And let's go down to the field look, now you for the second the half point Okay, put your backs this way. Okay, the white jerseys. See even here, fellas, shake hands and have a good one. Good job. Another mark of Anthony Barber's chasing is the 3,000-yard rushing mark in the season. He needs only 21 more yards to pick up that, so we'll probably get it in the second half. That would only make him the ninth player in high school football history, not in the state, in the country, to rush for 3,000 or more yards in one season. He needs 21 here in the second half to do that. That's about one off tackle play for him. That's right. What we've seen from him in the, in the first half certainly has been impressive. Darren Hart, number three, getting set to kick the ball off to start the second half for the Harding Rams. And they've got Barber as one of the deep men to receive the kickoff for the Trojans, standing back at about the four-yard line. They kick it away from Barber. And to the fullback, Dorman, 
And Dorman is out to about the 35, and he'll be stopped at that point. So first and 10 for the Garner Trojans, starting at about their own 35. We talked about the average yardage in a game for Barber. He averages about 204 yards rushing per game, and he's well along the way to that tonight with 119 on the first half. Starting out, Pitts, the quarterback, backs in the eye formation, handoff to Barber. Barber up to about the 40-yard line, and he'll pick up about five, maybe six yards on the initial carry. And it will be second down and six. Harding defensively wants to continue to do what they did most of the first half. Keep a lot of pressure on the outside, not give Garner a one-on-one -on -one situation where he only has one man to break. Betts back the pass on second down, throwing deep. And the ball was there, but number three, Robert Hinton, could not catch it. It was just a little bit out in front. They reached and couldn't quite bring it in, but they go with a play that time that we touched on in the first half, which we watch it again. Same thing happened in the first half. The left-handed quarterback, Betts, led the receiver hit by about two yards the first time they tried it, inches that time. And once again, he beat the coverage. So it brings up a third down and five. Two receivers stacked to the near side. Backs are in the I formation. Betts will pitch it out to Barber. Barber breaks one tackle. And now they hit him. The ball popped loose. Well, no, he, I guess he handed it off to number 10. Let's see. 10 ended up with the football. But I think they're going to mark it down back where he was. I think I heard the whistle blow when Barber was stopped right before the fumble. And that's the first thing. Right. See it here. I think I heard a whistle right when he was in the middle of a pile and he fumbled afterwards. We can look at that balance. Excellent you job. you believe that? And I'll tell you what, on that play, too, you saw a good block by his fullback. Uh, number 22 on the play, Chris Dorman, on Jeff Wilson, the defensive end for Harding, was trying to get in to get to him. And Dorman did a good job to stay Wilson off. Now they have two receivers lined up to the far side. First and 10, the ball at their own 45. Betts hands off. And not a lot of room this time. Number 72 was one of the early men to get in on the play, Steve Byers. And the Harding defensive line just did a good job that time to close all the holes up front, and Barber had nowhere to go. If you're Garner, I guess in the second half, you're, you're going to stay with a workhorse running back, obviously, but you're going to have to try to put the ball up a little bit more. Watch that run. Five yards. Anthony Barber with an exciting run, and all he needs is a little hole. If he gets a step on you, look out. He's had that's exactly what he did. That's the second long run, one of 61. This one of 55 yards. We'll look at the block once again by the fullback. Dorman sprung him that time, and when he gets going, he's something else. He now has 3,046 yards this season, becoming with the ninth player in, in high school history to have that many in a year. And now we get set for the extra point. Number 53 will attempt the point after. T.G. Rich puts it up, and it's good. 9.57 to play in the third quarter. Garner out in front of Harding, 14 to 7. One other thing to mention about Barber, on that touchdown, that makes number 45 on the season. And now Anthony Barber is the all-time high touchdown score in high school football history across the country. So congratulations to Anthony Barber on that feat. He's carried 15 times, has 185 yards and two touchdowns. And the bulk of the yard is picked up on the two long touchdown runs, which is typical of the Gardner offense. Can you imagine rushing for 3,046 yards and scoring 45 touchdowns in one year? That's more than 95% of high school running back's career. And you want to know what makes that interesting? The fact that in many games this year, 
he only played three quarters. They would bring him out in the fourth quarter. Otherwise, he probably would have had the record long before now. Sean Springs on the return. Well, see, they may, they may mark it down back where he originally got it because his knee touched the ground. That's what they're going to do. That's happened a couple of times to Harding tonight. Had a little trouble handling the kick returns. We'll mark it at the 25, first and 10 for the Rams at that point. And now the Harding Rams have been challenged. Their offense must try to come back and answer the challenge to tie the game up once again. They have not had the lead at any point in time in this ball game so far. And the Rams now will try to come back once again. And off to their workhorse, Byers, who's taken down the backfield. Number 40, Chris Thompson, got the penetration and made the tackle. So the Garner defense fired up. And they make a very good play that time, dropping Byers for about a three-yard loss. We've had three touchdowns in this football game. The total off the average distance for a touchdown, 67-yard average on the three touchdowns tonight. That's absolutely incredible. Boying back to pass, throwing caught by number three, Hart. And Hart is brought down at the 33, short of the first down. Number 32 and number 40, the men there on the defense, John Leach, number 32, Chris Thompson. Number 40, both of these players are sophomores. They'll be back next year. We'll watch the play again. They threw that to Hart very early in the, in the first quarter, the first possession they had. They go back with that play once again. It's a pretty good play. Picks up 11 there. And it's third down. They need about three yards for the first. Two receivers to near side. Now they send Ryan in motion. Hand off to Byers. Byers on the right side, stretches up close to the first down. It's all going to depend on where they mark it. He's up there close to it. But from what we can see there, it looks like he got enough to get it. They had to get the ball right to the 35-yard line, and they have it. Second effort got him the first down that time. Right. He was wrapped up in the back field. He got, got the first down by the nose of the football only. So the Rams face with first and 10 now from their own 35. Darren Hart lined up to the near side. Two receivers on the far side. Byers has a moan in the backfield. Take the handoff. Pressure coming. It's intercepted. Number 50 caught it and is in for a touchdown. The Garner Trojans with a big play. And what a play. Sean Dykes, or John Dykes rather, the man that made the play. But you can't give him all the credit. Defensive pressure coming in. Watch the play again as Ed Boeing takes a vicious hit. That was number 40, I think, that hit him. No, that wasn't 40. One of the other players number got 10, in. Pete Smith. All right. And Pete Smith hit him while he was in the motion of throwing. The ball lost his velocity. Number 50, Dykes, was there to catch it and just runs it in. A big, big defensive play for the Trojans. And now they lead 20 to 7. T.G. Rich set for the point after. It is up. It looked wide to the near no side, and it's no good. So with 7.52 to play in the third quarter, the Garner Trojans out in front of the Harding Rams by a score of 20 to 7. A bit of a surprise, I guess, at this point. A very good defensive play that time by Garner, who had played defensively tough all night. But remember, the Harding Rams have been down before in, in the playoffs. It, it brings to mind the opening playoff game against Independence, where in the third quarter they fell way behind, and then they made the miraculous comeback in the fourth quarter. With the exception of that game, though, Jeff, they haven't scored a lot of points in the playoffs. 18 against Ashbrook, 14 against Freedom, 16 against Grimsley. And right now, they trail 20 to 7. So uh, they got to score a lot of points in this garden. Their defense has been tremendous, especially pressuring Lawring. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities to sit back there and look across the field for a lot of receivers tonight. That's right. They've done an excellent job. Good kickoff. Field it by Durham. To the 20. Tries to come back to the near side. Brokes one tackle. Gets it across the 30 to about the 33. That was Ray Durham. And we have a marker down. And it is against Harding, so that's going to back it up. The Rams got 
a decent return, but that'll back them up. They really have not had outstanding field position to start off from tonight. And that has to be one of the big factors. Holding on the run back. And there you hear the official indication holding against Harding. It'll be first down and 10. The Rams back up at their own 22. And a very big series for both teams. The Rams need to move the ball down and get a score to stay in this football game. Byers trying to run on the near side behind his blocking. And he got to about the 23 for a short game, but not a whole lot. Chris Thompson wants to get on the tackle. He's had an outstanding evening. Also, Pete Smith. So Smith and Thompson have been the stalwarts on defense tonight for Garner. And let's not forget the other Smith, number 23, Steve Smith, who has also been a very prominent name. Actually, on that run, they didn't gain anything. They lost about a half yard. They have three, two receivers on the top of your screen now. Myers in the backfield. Pressure coming from the blind side. He got the pass away to Chris Ryan. Ryan is brought down at about the 33-yard line. I believe that was number 23, Steve Smith, making the tackle. Chris Ryan, the senior, with the catch. But once again, number 10 came charging through from the blind side. Pete Smith watched it. Well, you don't get to see it there. But he put a hit on Wine right after he got rid of the football. So Harding has got to do something to stop the blitz of the Garner defense because Wine is having trouble getting the time he needs. He's going to keep it this time to get the first down and should have it with no problem. Quarterback he just straight ahead, picks up the first down. And right now is when you really get tested as a football team, when you really get an indication of the character of the team. You're down 20 to 7. You're playing a team that has an explosive offense, which is known for their offense, but it's coming tonight. They've really played tough, aggressive defense, and you've got to find a way to come back. You'd like to run the ball with Byers, but you're down by two touchdowns, so you have to change the style a little bit, and let's see if they can do that. Quick out pass caught by number 20, a great catch, because the ball was thrown behind him. That was Wendell Weathers that made the catch. Weathers I'm surprised he's in there right now. We haven't seen him a lot this year in the games we've watched Harden play. Well, Harding at this point in time might be just trying to use a, a few different faces for a few different looks. It's a nice catch. He had to reach behind him. Successful yeah. catch. Excellent catch. And second and five. Going with pressure of instantly, and Byers is wrapped up. And I'll tell you what, he was wrapped up from the word go. Yeah, John Dykes, who intercepted that pass and went for a touchdown minutes ago, came in there at the snap of the ball, and there was... Nowhere for the Harding backs to go. You hear so much about this Garner offense, and we keep talking about it, but the defense is also good. They've shut out four opponents this year and held three other teams to one touchdown. All right, they have two receivers lined up to the near side. Possible hook and lateral if Loin can get time. He throws it, caught by number three, Hart, and he's taken out of bounds. Tackle after it was out of bounds by number 10. And you have to question whether or not there should have been a flag on that play, but the officials won't call it. They're going to let him play. A good tackle put on by Pete Smith. Smart receiver, Darren Hart is. He knew where the first down marker's at. He goes there to get the first down by a yard. I tell you what, Mr. Steve Smith makes you pay when you come into his neighborhood. He's going to wallop you. And Pete Smith, the other defensive back, came over to finish the job off. Hand off to Byers. Near side, some running room. Byers slips, but not until he gets down to about the 46. A pickup of close to seven. And the Rams are moving the football, but we've seen that in the first half. They were able to drive the football. That wasn't the problem. But because of the length of the field that they had to go, they couldn't keep the drive going long enough to get in the end zone. They've had this football now a little over three minutes in the drive, which started their own 23. They have two receivers to the top of your screen, two backs behind the quarterback, Moy. Misdirection to David Petty. Petty does not get away. Looks like for a moment he might have some running room, but number 70 and number 10 got over there to corral him. 
Keith Evans, number 70, the junior defensive end, and of course, number 10, Pete Smith, the linebacker. He's just shy of the first down. It will bring up a third down. They need about a yard. And we have an injured man down for Garner. Now, the last time Harding had the third down and one or less than one, they had a quarterback sneak from Laurie, and he picked up three yards on the play. So let's see if Hardy comes right back with that play here. I would say, judging from the way that the Garner defense has been playing so far, uh, that would be one of the best plays they could try because it seems that the Garner defense very quick off the snap of the football. If you try to go to your deep back, if they get any kind of penetration at all, then chances are you're not going to get the yardage needed for the first down. The quarterback takes it right away. All you need is a strong line surge, and he can stretch enough for the first down. 4.07, the time remaining in the third quarter. 20 to 7, the score. Garner out in front of Harding. There you see the crowd. And we also have another distinguished guest here tonight. Santa Claus has come to town to watch some exciting state uh, high school championship football. Tell you what, Mrs. Claus better fatten him up for Christmas. He needs to gain some weight. He's a little uh, in uh, too good a shape for this time of the year. Well, you know how it is with budget cuts and all. You got to... <laughs> they go straight forward. And they have the first down. Smaller chimneys nowadays, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we'll drop. We'll drop that now. <laughs> <laughs> the ball marks at the 42-yard line. It'll be a first down for the Harding Rams. They just keep it and go straight forward. That's your fourth play or uh, fourth first down to describe. Once again, well, we'll get back to that in a moment. Harding a first down. Two receivers on an air side. Going back to pass. Going the other way to Darren Hart. Hart makes the catch. And it's brought down at about the 31. 23 and number 10, both over there. That's the Smith team. Steve Smith and Pete Smith. Outstanding catch by Hart. He had to leave his feet and pull it in. The throw's a little high from Loring. And look at him stretch out and make the catch. That's 17 first downs in the football game for Hardy. Steve Smith held him up. Pete Smith finished him off. But some good offensive blocking that time, too. Hand off, Byers, near side. It's undercut, but he gets inside the 30 to about the 28. Number 30 was the man that tried to take his legs out from under him, Billy Sparkman, with a good defensive play for Garner. We'd like to welcome once again our new viewers tonight on HCTV Sports, the WRAL up in Raleigh, and Alert Cable in Apex and in Garner. We're very pleased to be able to bring you exciting state championship playoff action. And right now, the Garner Trojans out in front, 20 to 7. Harding rolling is the quarterback. Long who is brought down. Number nine, I believe, is the man that got there first to him. That's Kelly Hill. And that time, it almost looked as though that was a design play. I believe it was. It was an option play. And you might see one or two of those a game run by Harding. A little element of surprise by the Rams, but uh, when you're running against this Garner defense, which is so very, very quick, it's very tough to get outside of those ends and outside linebackers. Another big third down play here for the Rams. They've had quite a few of those third down plays in this drive. All right, they have two receivers, one wide on each side. Going back to pass, handoff to Byers, wants to go near side, cannot do it. Number 40, Chris Thompson makes the hit, and he has played a whale of a football game tonight. Thompson's just a sophomore. That means he's going to be back a few more years for Garner, and he has really played an outstanding game. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Some people might wonder why they would run on a third and six, but the way Tom Knotts and Harding looks at things down here, it's not they have, they're going to run two plays on third and six. They're going to go for it regardless, so they have confidence that they can pick up six yards and two running plays. Back to pass. The pressure is there. They set up a screen, and a pass is incomplete. The ball was off target, tried to get Jonathan Byers with it, and once again, the Garner Trojan defense does an outstanding job. They stall a Harding drive that went most of the length of the field. There you see the coach of Garner, Hal Stewart, who's been a very successful coach. We mentioned that he was formerly the coach for Richmond County, 
and with a team at Richmond County in 1978, took his team to the state championship and defeated West Charlotte. So he's been here before, and everywhere he has gone, he has turned programs into winners. Betts, back a pass on first down, looking deep. The receiver tangled up, and pass interference will be the call against Dwayne Hill. I believe it'll be against Hill. We'll have to wait and see. Hill ended up on the ground. And the receiver was able to make his way downfield. That was a flanker, number 10. Pass interference, number 33. Okay, it is pass interference against Dwayne Hill of the Harding Rams. That's been a problem for Harding this year. They, they really haven't gotten penalized a large number of times, but it seems that they get penalized in the worst possible situation. Defensive pass interference. First down. Garner has completed one of those long passes yet. It's the third one they've tried, and two incompletions the third time around, though, they get a 15-yard gain on the pass interference. And keep going back to that long pass. Well, I think more than anything else, we had some men moving early for Garner that time on the left side, but no flags were thrown. I think more than anything else, that deep pass is a stabilizing play just to keep the defense honest. But the fact is, the receivers have been able to get open They've been in there. most You're cases. Right. You're right. So they gain about four yards, well, three or four. We'll call it second down and seven. We're under a minute to play here in the third quarter with Garner having a big third quarter, 13 points unanswered thus far. And a hit put on Barber in the backfield. Number 32, Roderick Cole. Roderick Cole, number 32, was in there. Also back there for Harding was number 59 that was able to contribute. That's Osco Jackson. Don't see a lot of Osco. He's a sophomore, but it's effective when he gets to play, and he's going to get a lot more playing time in the years coming. There's Tom Knox, the head coach of the Harding Rams, who now is in his fifth year with the team, has amassed a 42-18 and 18 record in those five years. Outstanding job. Betts rolling to the near side. Pressure put on and brought down by Roderick Cole. No, I'm sorry, Jeff Wilson, number 82, is the man that got to him. And a great, great defensive play by the Harding defense. And what that does is that backed them up 15 yards, Jeff. So right now when Harding gets the football back, they're going to have better field position, which uh, is going to be vitally important here in the fourth quarter. In fact, we go to the fourth quarter now, third quarter is over. Harding's got to score two touchdowns, and they can't take a lot of time on the first drive. So uh, they're going to have pretty good field position. So we'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this. And welcome back to Charlotte's Memorial Stadium for uh, HCTV's high school game of the week, the state championship game, the Harding Rams, the Gardner Trojan. This is Jeff Harlow along with Randy Lee. We're set to start the fourth quarter, and the Gardner Trojans out in front right now, 20 to 7. At halftime, we went in with a 7 7 score. In the second half, though, more excitement from Anthony Barber, who scored his 44th touchdown of the season, or correction, the 45th touchdown of the season, which makes him the all-time scoring touchdown leader in high school football history. So congratulations to him on that. He also crossed the three, he crossed the uh, 3,000 mark uh, as far as yardage is concerned, making him one of only nine people in the country to have done that. So outstanding achievement by that man who scored a touchdown. And then of course, the other touchdown came on a big defensive play in which Edwine back to pass was hit while in the act of throwing. Number 50, Dykes, was able to get the interception and ran it in for the touchdown. And then it was John Dykes, number 50, is the man that scored the other touchdown. And like that, we've got a 20 to seven score in favor of Garner. Last time Harding had the football, they had to start from their own 23. They drove the ball all the way down to the 27-yard line at Garner. 14-play drive took four minutes and 50 seconds, but Garner, as they have all night long, shut the door on them when they got close. All right, first down and 10 for the Harding Rams. Receivers to both sides. Boeing has some time this time. Booking to 89, and he has to play catch and center center. Number 
number nine went up with him and comes down with the interception. That's Kelly Hill, the linebacker, 5'11", 175-pound senior, and comes up with another big defensive play, and the Garter defense has been outstanding tonight. Watch it again. Third time they've intercepted Lawler. You won't see a better interception at any level of football. Watch him fight for the football. Hill wrestles it away from the big tight end, Anthony Rice. And right now, Garner has the ball at the 30-yard line of Hardy. And you know, Rice is 6'4". Hill is only 5'11", but he just leaped right above it. Garner, excellent field position. Anthony Barber with the football. Breaks one tackle. And finally brought down as he gets inside the 20 to about the 16-yard line. And continues his outstanding performance. We talked about him before the game. We talked about his accomplishments. And he's been able to, to set those national records tonight. Watch him one more time. I've never seen a high school running back as good as this Anthony Barber. Look here. He's wrapped up and breaks away and picks up five, six, seven, eight more yards. Kid's a man among boys down there. He's amazing. We'll hear a lot about him in his collegiate football career before it's over, I'm sure, before getting injured. And maybe even beyond that. This time in the near side, and a man that got him was the other barber. So, Anthony Barber, we introduce you to Michael Barber for the Harding Rams, but a good run once again. He's inside the 15 and down to about the 13. Right now, Garner going for a touchdown and face score here. I'm sure the Trojans are mighty confident they can hold a 26 or 27 to seven lead in the fourth quarter. So this, this touchdown could wrap it up for them. Almost certainly if they can score it. Again, Barber, good running. He gets it to about the 10, and he'll be stopped at that point. So I'll pick up of a few. Once again, talking about Barber's accomplishments, some of the people who he has surpassed, just to throw a few names at you, Billy Sims, Earl Campbell, and one from the area down around Georgia land, Herschel Walker. So some pretty prominent names who this man, Anthony Barber, has surpassed their record set in high school and has been just outstanding. So it would not be a surprise if you see Garner's quarterback that signaling for a timeout. Would not be surprising if one day we don't see Anthony Barber in the NFL. Wouldn't that be something? Well, I'm sure his ability. He can handpick his college to where he wants to go. A lot of people are interested in him. Some big names like Notre Dame, Oklahoma is said to be interested, and Alabama scout is here tonight to watch him, and I'm sure he's been very impressed by what he's seen. And I'm sure he's not the only scout here tonight. There's a lot of excellent football players in the field on both sides, and we've got some major college football players down there, and also some football players who might not go to major college in AIA, Division I, AA, but they're going to have outstanding football careers. So a lot of talent down there in the football field. we got a, a combined record of 28-0 for those two teams tonight. And with that note, you have to mention the fact that regardless of who wins or loses tonight, both these teams have a lot to be proud of on their accomplishments this season. The unfortunate thing is somebody has to be the loser. And right now, the Garner Trojans are in the driver's seat leading 20 to 7 with the ball at the Harding nine-yard line. They have a third down, and they need about five yards, it looks like, for the first. Nine minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the football game. So right now, the Harding defense, if they're going to have a chance at winning this game, is going to have to prevent a score by Garner. We have a man jumping early, Vernon Hunter, number 66, and he's going to be called, I believe, for offsides. That gives Garner a first down. First and goal. And what it also does is puts him down at about the four-yard line. And it's almost a sure bet that Barber can score from that close in. Yeah, three guesses he's going to get the ball inside the five. D3, dead ball. I don't think Let's anyone does. The defense. The first down. But it might just surprise us and try to go with Dorman. Dorman is not uh, a, a bad back in his own right, just hasn't uh -oh. had the ball that much. Well, put, put, the money, put the money on Barber on the sweep. Yeah. 45 touchdowns this year. Let's see if they give it to him to try to get his 46. There Barber it is. on the sweep. Inside the five. Inside the end zone. And Anthony Barber 
just puts icing on top of the cake and how sweet it is for the Garner Trojans. And of course, that man right there, number 43, Anthony Barber, and just watch the play again. That's a good blocking on the right side of the line that time. Super block on the offensive line. Look at the blocks. And he stepped over one tackler and made it look easy, but that time, the offensive line led him into the end zone. He only had to really get away from one tackler, and he jumped over him. So that was an easy play. The offensive line just blew Harding off the ball. And now it's a 26 to seven score. Garner out in front. They'll now attempt the extra point. Well, they're gonna go for two. That's gonna throw or wants to. Now he's gonna run it. And he is across. So he's got it. A two point conversion by the quarterback, Stacy Betts. And let's make it 28 to seven. So at nine minutes, 36 seconds to play in the fourth quarter, the Garner Trojans are that far away from a state championship. Keep in mind, they have never been here before. This is their first ever appearance in the state championship. And what an outstanding game they have played. Not just Anthony Barber, certainly he has been outstanding. We talked about him, 21 carries, 214 yards rushing, three touchdowns. You can go on and on about Anthony Barber's accomplishments. But also, let's talk about the defense of the Garner Trojans because they have played an outstanding ball game in their own right and have shut down an offense which most people felt would be equal, if not maybe a little bit superior to Garner's because of the versatility. But the defensive play by Garner has put Harding's offense in check all night. They've allowed them to move the ball downfield, but they have not allowed them to score once they got down close. And that has been a problem for Harding uh, in the playoffs. Last week up at Greensboro Grimsley, they reported that they were inside the 25 times and didn't score. So some very good defensive efforts, and Garner certainly has shown that tonight. But we've got 9.36 left, still a lot of time. A couple of big plays could have the Rams back in this one, and certainly they're a team that have come up with big plays during the course of the season. So you can't count them out just yet. They put a little squib kick on the ground. Byers will return it, and he's going to be caught quickly. For 15, number nine, is the man down there, Kelly Hill, with the hit. So Harding starts deep in their own territory. One thing to talk about the Harding Rams at this point in the ball game, we're getting late on in the game. This is a time when Jonathan Byers can become his biggest threat. As the defense starts to wear down a little bit, it doesn't take much, and Byers can break the big gainer. But as we talk about Byers and the big gainer, he comes off the field, and they'll have receivers on both sides. The Rams appear to be looking to throw. Hoying on first down back to pass. Throws an interception, and number 10 is into the end zone for the score, and that will all but finish it. An excellent play by Pete Smith playing center fielder, and it was a bad pass. Hoying clearly off target on that pass. They wanted to hit Darren Hart, but just didn't have enough on the ball. Yeah, he hits Pete Smith right between the numbers this time. Right at him, and uh, looking for Petty. Petty had even really turned around, and he goes 25 yards for a touchdown, and Pete Smith had himself one heck of a football game here this evening. Two interceptions returned for touchdowns for the Garner defense. That really has helped them a great deal. And they'll call a timeout. They lead 34 to seven. We and talked about uh, Byers having such great second halves. So one reason he hasn't had a great second half here tonight is because they've been trailing. They haven't had the football as much as they have they had in the first half. And keep in mind, Jonathan Byers had gained over 100 yards in the second half alone in the last three football games. Not even closer tonight. I believe he has seven carries in the second half for a total of eight yards. And that is something to talk about. We talked about the Garner defense. Come on, come on. And I don't know how many yards he has for the entire football game. 92. 92, so he doesn't even have 100 yards on the game. They have contained Jonathan Byers. And what they have also done that has been so effective is they took away Ed Loing's passing game. They put a lot of pressure on Loing, and we've seen Loing make some bad plays. That one uh, a moment ago, a bad pass. 
And maybe he's shaking up a little bit because of the way the defense has played. They put a lot of pressure on him tonight. And it's just not been a good night for the Harding offense. You give credit to the Garner defense because they have played well and helped to contribute to that and also have been able to take advantage of the opportunities they have been given. And right now, Garner knows Lawring and Harding are on a pass, so it's that much more difficult at this point in time. T.G. Rich will put the point after up, but it will be no good. And so, with 9.06 to play in the game, Garner out in front of Harding, 34 to seven, and the Trojans have played outstanding football. And all the viewers up in the, the Raleigh area, they have to be really thrilled about the way that their Trojans have performed. And uh, of course, the two things we talked about mostly, Barber, excellent job running, but nothing new for him. And an outstanding job by the defense tonight. And that was really gonna be the question mark for their team. I think most people looking at the game felt that Barber would produce points because he's done it all year. But most people felt that Harding would score against the corner defense. A lot of people didn't think they could stop the pass. I'd say a lot of teams in the eastern part of the state don't throw the ball much, so Harding would have the advantage there. But they have taken that away from Harding because of the pressure they put on Ed Lawing tonight. The kickoff. Fielded at the 15. Ray Durham has it across the 30 to about the 31. And it will be first down and 10 to Harney Rams at that point. How many yards did Barber average a game this year rushing? Coming into tonight, 204 yards per game. Well, he's just slightly above his average at 214 now. And what a time to have one of your better games of the year in the state championship game. Had he not been playing tonight, he would have been in the Shrine Bowl tomorrow, so it's, it's very sweet for him to be able to lead his team to a possible championship. A strong run by Sean Moore for Harding that time as he gets around the right side. That's number 10. And he's a running back that in some ways is similar to Barber because he has excellent speed and quickness. And he'll be back next year. This Harding Ram football team, very, very young. In fact, both of these teams pretty young as you look at a lot of the players on the Garner side. Not a whole lot of seniors. Harding gets to Byers. Byers to the near side. Inside the 40 to about the 37. He's excited, fired up, but he wants more. He wants to get the ball in the end zone and get the Rams on the road to a comeback, but it's an awful long way to go and a very short time to get there. But watch him run it again. Nice block out there by uh, Joey Hustet with the wing back. That run puts Byers over 100 yards now for the fourth straight week in the playoffs. Receivers put wide to both sides. The Rams with Hoyne, the quarterback, fakes the pitch out, misdirection to Sean Moore, but the defense read it perfectly, and number 30 is the man that got the penetration. Billy Sparkman became the spark plug on that play as he got in, got penetration, and wrapped up Sean Moore before he could get started. Once again, another great defensive play by the Trojans. One thing I noticed about this Trojan defense, they don't overreact, they don't overpursue. The misdirection plays are not really effective, and they've been effective all year for Harding. Well, Hoying is in all kinds of trouble back there, and finally wiped out. A corner man came up with it for the, the whistle and the blown, I think. Well, no, they're going to say Garner recovers a fumble. So the hit was put on the quarterback by number 30, Billy Sparkman, and number 70 came out of the pile with it. They voted the fumble. Well, I thought I saw one referee signal the ball was down, but the other one came in and ruled it a fumble, so that's six turnovers for Harding tonight. Two fumbles, four interceptions. Very uncharacteristic of the Harding Rams. The only other time we saw them do this by committing so many turnovers was in the first game of the playoffs. When they played Independence, they coughed it up, I believe it was six times in that game. And of course, as a result, they allowed 32 points and very nearly lost the game, but we were able to come back with a great second half comeback. Tonight, though, they're facing a defense that is, is tougher than the one they faced then, and an offense that is so explosive. And 34 to seven tells the story on the scoreboard. Garner now with the football, and it only gets better for them from here. Barber breaks tackles. Now he's got a hole, and Barber is gone once again. Touchdown number 46. Anthony 
Barber, a 50-yard run. And how many yards has he got now on the night? Well, we'll 64. 264 yards over 3,000 yards. In fact, now he might be over 3,100. I don't know exactly what the yardage figure is right now for him. He has 166 yards alone in three touchdown runs. He's broken one from 65, from 55. This one off the left side for 50. So 264 yards. Outstanding. I've never seen anyone better this level. No surprise why so many people are interested in him. They blocked the extra point attempt, and the whistles are blown. Mark Lattimore, 57, was the man that got up in front of him. But not really a situation where they have to worry a lot about it. Leading 40 to 7, the Garner Trojans a 33-point lead with 6.46 to play. And what can you say about the Trojans that we haven't already said? Just an outstanding performance. There's the crowd here, a big crowd on hand from both schools. When you get down to this point in the game, Randy, you have to remember the fact that you're hard and you're down by 33. All intent and purposes, the game is over. It's not likely you're going to come back and win at this point. But you have to reflect back on the season that you've had to get here. They went 14-0. Last year they came within a game of the state championship. This year they get here and they get uh, wiped out, at least at this point they are. And it has to be a big disappointment for them. But it's been a game where they really have not played well. Certainly not as well as we've seen them play. And Garner has played outstanding and they've been on top of every opportunity, which and a good football team will do. Personally, I just feel talent-wise, I believe Garner's got a better football team than what I've seen tonight. They just have the ability to every play score and uh, you'll have a stat here in this half alone for Anthony Barber which gives you goosebumps in the second half nine carries 145 yards three touchdowns so he's got 359 yards no that's not right 264 yards total but an outstanding player which ain't bad, is it? Not bad at all. If you're Anthony Barber, you've got to be happy about what you've accomplished tonight. And I think everybody here, even the Harding fans, deep down inside, have to feel somewhat, uh, for, you know, for the running back, Barber, that he was able to accomplish what very few runners have ever accomplished before in the high school level. But certainly they don't like the fact that their team trails by 33 with 6.41 to play. And a lot of people have already begun to leave. Memorial Stadium, especially some of the Harding people. And the Rams have the ball on offense. Right now, they just like to be able to put some points on the scoreboard and be able to establish some respectability. I don't really think coming into tonight's game, Randy, that Harding expected Garner to be as tough defensively as they have proven to be. Well, they go on the ground. Good hard running. Up across the 40 to about the 42. And that was number 31, Joey Hustedler on the carry. Hustedler was an excellent tight end for this team. Tonight he's playing at wingback. The reason for that is that he has just come back off in an injury that put him out for a good portion of the season. We were here several weeks back when they played Gastonia Ashbrook. He really wanted to play, but could not because of the injury. And it's good to see him back. Byers with the ball near side. Broke a tackle across midfield and out of bounds. Brought down all the way up close to his bench. So some tempers uh, got the on the carry. maybe flaring a little bit. He's got a first down, marking the ball inside the 45 and about the 44. I think we have a personal foul call against Garner that time. Watch it again. Once again off that left side. I'm guessing probably seven or eight out of every ten yards he's had tonight. He's off the left side of his offensive line behind Good Sam Presley. Well, we had a little break up on the official's microphone there, but you can see the indication is against Garner, a personal foul. Tackling Byers out of bounds. 
Presley and Bright have been outstanding for Harding over the left offensive line tonight. Back to pass, Loin. Quick pass to Ryan. Ryan, the 20, the 15, and dragged down at about the 11 yard line. The Harding Rams trying to get down close and try to get some points on the scoreboard. But right now it's a situation where well, we'll watch the play again. Ron's had a couple catches tonight. Picks up a good block for number three, Darren Hart. They got a hand on him. Slowed him, slowed the defensive back down somewhat. But good defensive play by Garner. They were on top of it pretty quick. Misdirection run, David Petty. Petty on his feet, gets it down into about the five yard line. They pick up of about six. An excellent job by David Petty. And that is a running back that you're going to see a lot of in the future for the Hardy Grams. Of course, Jonathan Byers will be gone after this year, the senior. And in all likelihood, 34, David Petty will be his replacement. They give it to Byers. Byers wrapped up and a flag goes down. I don't know if we're going to be able to see what happened here, but Harding had a mix up in personnel in the field. They had to bring two players off, two players on. Anthony Rice, the tight end, was running onto the field from the sideline, so he was moving toward the line of scrimmage, even though he might have been 10 or 15 yards behind the play. He hadn't made it there yet. He was moving toward the line of scrimmage, and that's a motion penalty. And Coach Tom Knott's upset about it as he yells instructions out to his quarterback. But once again, at a time where the penalties, they can't afford to have penalties. They have committed one. A point where Harding really needs to try to get something on the scoreboard. But at this point in the ball game, with 438 Second showing on the clock, it's all academic. 40 to 7, the score. No team has scored this many points against Harding all season long. And there haven't been many teams that have been able to hold Harding's offense to just seven points. I can't think of any this year. There were a couple of occasions, but not very many. I think, I think East Mecklenburg held them to six. They beat East Mecklenburg six to three early in the year. That might be the only occasion. Harding just running it straight forward on the last third play. They'll have a third down situation. They're going to need about six yards to pick up the first. Watch the play again. Just straight forward running by Byers. Lawing back to pass. Watch the end zone in a corner. Caught touchdown. touchdown by Wendell Weathers. Number 20. And a Harding Rams get a score at the back of the end zone. Weathers sneaking in behind. A name you don't usually hear on the other side of a end line pass, but he got in the end zone. A good pass this time by Loing for the touchdown. Weathers has made a couple of catches tonight. There's another. He's got to stretch out, make the catch, and worry about his feet getting him in the back of the end zone. Harding sets up. They will go for two points. Loing throwing quick over the middle. Hard go, go. by Anthony Rice. Good pass. Good play call. And they make the two-point conversion with 3.50 to play in the game. 40 to 15. Garner out in front. I'll give you a misleading stat tonight. Harding has 22 first downs. Garner has 10. Very misleading. You would never guess that if you look up at the scoreboard. But if you want to wonder why the scoreboard reads the way it does, all you have to do is look at the stats of Anthony Barber and also look at a couple of those scores that read INT for touchdown. Yep. And that explains it. Garner's offensive line has been impressive, but uh, Anthony Barber has gained so many yards after breaking tackles. That's the, that's the story about Barber. That's what he has been able to do that really has hurt Harding. Harding has been able to get to him initially and put some hits on him, but it can't bring him down. They can't get two or three guys on him at the same time and prevent him from picking up the extra yardage, and that has been the secret to his success tonight. His offensive line has done a good job opening some holes on several occasions. You and see Harding here lining up for an onside kick. 
They haven't even had to do this very often this year. And it will be fielded. Good hands by number 32, who puts it down. That is John Leach, the linebacker. And they're going to mark it at about the 32, I think. Well, make it the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Garner at that point. You see a shot of the Garner sideline, a very happy one right now, with the Trojans all but showing up their first ever state championship. Al Stewart, the head coach, a fine coach, who has done an excellent job with his people. And the Trojans have put together an all-around team effort led by Anthony Barber. Number 42 on the carry. They run it on the ground. Number 42 gets the call this time. Have a couple changes in the offensive backfield for Garner. New quarterback is 5'7", junior. Steve Moore replacing Stacy Betts. Betts didn't complete a lot of passes tonight, but he really didn't have to. He went long on uh, three occasions, as you said, to loosen up the defense for the running game. And Clifton Smith, number 42, is in. He's a 6-point, 175-pound senior tailback who carried on that last play. Pitch out again, number 42 with the call, a short game. And the Harding Ram defense able to get a hold of him and hold on. So Anthony Barber probably has finished for the evening, but outstanding statistics for Anthony Barber. We'll try to get his final statistics from Walter here in just a moment. Walter has been kept pretty busy tonight trying to keep the figures on Barber's performance. A fumble. And the Harding Rams have it. Number 88, Nash. Sam Nash came up with it and runs it back to about the 15-yard line. Number 42 had the football. Clifton Smith and Sam Nash recovered it. And the Harding Ram defense comes up with a big play, and they'll have a chance to put some more points on the scoreboard. Watch the play again. Well, you can't see where the ball pops loose, but Sam Nash got over there to recover it. First down play pass out to Darren Hart. And he gets in the end zone for the touchdown. And the Hardy Rams are going to make it a little bit closer. That pass from about the 16-yard line, so a 16-yard touchdown pass from Ed Wine to Darren Hart. The final stats, assuming that Anthony Barber is finished for the night, 22 carries, 264 yards, and four touchdowns. A touchdown pass here uh, coming because Garner's defensive backs weren't ready. They just broke out of the huddle, and Time out. Harding was ready to go, and he threw it out to Hart. There was no one out here to guard him, so it was an easy touchdown for Harding, the easiest one they've had tonight. Most definitely. That's what you call catching the defense off guard. Basketball, they call that cherry picking, I believe. We've reached the two-minute warning in the football game. The score, 40 to 21. Garner out in front by a wide margin over the Harding Rams. They've scored a couple of late touchdowns. It was 40 to 7. So the Harding Rams just trying to add points for respectability. But if they can get an onside kick that works for them, on the next series and score again, then they might have to uh, shake up a few people on the Garner defense. Garner might have to become a bit concerned, but right now they still have plenty of cushion leading by 19. Harding will probably set up for a two-point conversion here and try to cut the deficit to 17, which would bring them within three touchdowns. Been a wild fourth quarter, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It has indeed. Receivers split wide to both sides. We've had five touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Loing, rolling, wants to pass, doesn't have a man open initially, gets it to Rice, and Rice gets decked by number 20, I think, that time on the defense, who is, and so we'll take a break. With Garner 40, Harding 21, we'll be back after this. 
And welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Two minutes left in the 1987 state championship game. Jeff Harlow along with Randy Lee. The Garner Trojans out in front of the Harding Rams, 40 to 21. On that last play, the Rams attempting the two-point conversion, which failed. They were penalized. And that will be assessed on this kickoff, which likely will be an onside kick. And it is fielded well by number nine. And whistles go down. The ball didn't go 10 yards. That's what the whistle is about. The ball must go at least 10 yards. Well, I tell you what, uh, Gardner can pick the ball up if they want to. That's I think right. it was offsides. Yeah. Okay, it was offsides against Harding then. Gardner can pick it up anytime they want to. Harding can't touch it until it goes 10 yards. So and Kelly Hill could have gone the distance for the touchdown yeah. that time. They blew the whistle a little early that time. I've never seen a whistle blown to stop play on offsides on a kickoff. I have throw either. the flag and let it go at that. I've never seen it stopped before. It's supposed to be an optional penalty. You can decline but, uh, it, so why blow it dead at that point in time? Exactly. Maybe a little bit of a different ruling in a kickoff situation or an onside kick. I don't think Gardner's going to argue that right now. No, I, would, I don't think they're at least a bit concerned. Right now, the only thing they're concerned about is wrapping things up and going home to celebrate their first ever state championship. Dorman on the return. It's hit hard. You can hear that hit all the way up here. Number 27 put the hit on him. At about the 42-yard line. And so Garner will have first down and 10 at that point. And once again, we'll get a chance to look at an offense that has produced a lot tonight. And Barber right now is in the backfield. Now, let's see if he's going to stay in. Well, I think he's going to come over to the sideline now, Dorman and Barber. So the backups are in. First down and 10 to Garner Trojans. Stacy Best, the starting quarterback, is back in the football game now, number seven. Some new backs behind him. I formation, first and ten. Handoff, number 32, is hit hard after a short game. That was John Leach on the carry. We've seen him a couple of times tonight. He made that uh, big pass play, defense play, back in the second quarter, I believe, when Anthony Rice was open down the middle. That's Leach right. came across and knocked the ball away. And at that point, the game was tied at seven. A very, very big play. Had Harding been able to score on that play, we might have seen a different type of ball game, though certainly it seemed inevitable that Anthony Barber was going to have an outstanding performance. They got a couple on the play, second down, a give again to number 32, and he's hard running across the 45, out to about the 47, so good hard running by John Leach now. So we are under a minute to play in the ball game. Just about 30 seconds left. So that might be the last play of the game. Gardner may just let the clock tick off now. Fifteen seconds on the clock. Under ten. And now the fans count it down. And it's history. And congratulations to the new state North Carolina state champions, the Garner Trojans, by a final score of 40 to 21 over the Harding Rams. Their first ever high school championship in the sport of football and just an outstanding game by the entire Garner team. They did an excellent job in all phases of the game, which is what they had to do. And of course, the man, as you see, there's Tom Nossett.